You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood. From every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us a kingdom. Priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together today and prepare now to enter into our worship, let us begin as we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, raise up, we pray, the author of our salvation, who is seated at your right hand, so that when our Savior comes again in majesty, those who have given new birth in baptism may be clothed with blessed immortality through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. One night while Paul was in Corinth, the Lord said to him in a vision, Do not be afraid. Go on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. No one will attack and harm you, for I have many people in the city. He settled there for a year and a half and taught the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews rose up together against Paul and brought him to the tribunal, saying, This man is inducing people to worship God contrary to the law. When Paul was about to reply, Gallio spoke to the Jews. If it were a matter of some crime or malicious fraud, I should with reason hear the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a question of arguments over doctrines and titles and your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of such matters. And he drove them away from the tribunal. They all seized Sosthenes, the synagogue official, and beat him in full view of the tribunal. But none of this was of concern to Gaudi. Paul remained for quite some time, and after saying farewell to the brothers, he sailed for Syria, together with Priscilla and Aquila. At Censories, he had shaved his head because he had taken a vow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is king of all the earth. All you peoples clap your hands, shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great king over all the earth. God is king of all the earth. We bring people, he brings people under us, nations under our feet. He chooses for us our inheritance, the glory of Jacob, 
whom he loves. God is king of all the earth. God mounts his throne amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our king, sing praise. God is king of all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. She no longer remembers the pain because of her joy that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day, you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue during this time between Ascension and Pentecost, uh, we are given today in our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles um, the story of Paul and given some detail of his year and a half ventures in Corinth, the great uh, Greek city where he had tremendous success. And we see that while he is having success, many of uh, the Jewish authorities are not happy uh, with the success that he is having. And of course, bring him before the Roman tribunal uh, with accusations of slander and accusations of teaching the people contrary to the law. And as we hear in this morning's section from sacred scripture, uh, the pro council at the time, Gallio, basically says, uh, you know, this is a matter of doctrinal issue. I'm not going to hear it. In other words, what we might say in our terminology today is he dismisses the case or he um, refers it to another area of competency. And of course, what's interesting and what sometimes um, we have to understand is that we see that in this particular passage uh, that the head of the synagogue is beaten in full view of Gallio. And we might say to ourselves, well, why is he beaten? Why isn't Paul just taken by the Jewish authorities? And why isn't he simply tried by them and maybe even put to death or stoned? Well, the reason is that Paul is a Roman citizen. And a Roman citizen has the right by Roman law only to be judged on matters that could relate to capital punishment by Roman authorities only. And so basically what happened is, although Gallio turned it over to the Hebrew authorities, the Hebrew authorities have no jurisdiction, no power, no ability really to try him for what they would want to try him for, and certainly to give him a sentence of death. And so they, they um, exhibit their frustration by being the official of the synagogue. It's not funny, but it's ironic. And there's a little twist if you understand the whole thing going on here. And Gallio is sort of smiling because he would have known 
the Pahosa Roman citizen. So he basically um, exonerates him, uh, but turns it over to them, of which they are powerless to act, and their frustration manifests itself. And Paul then, as we hear, goes on. He continues. And so many times we see in the life of St. Paul, as well as many of the early Christian apostles and missionaries, that there is this magnificent fortitude, this strength, this courage, this zeal that comes from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And our opening prayer today reminds us that the Lord, seated at the right hand of God, indeed brings forth that power of the Holy Spirit. And it is that power of the Holy Spirit that gives all disciples this great gift of perseverance. And as we look at St. Paul, we, we take great inspiration thinking about Sometimes when we might uh, feel a little down or when we might feel defeated or we might feel uh, possibly that we're not being effective, uh, we look to St. Paul and we should glean great, not only insight, but great example by his perseverance. Uh, indeed, he does not give up, but he turns to God and through the grace of the Holy Spirit and with the power of Christ in which he is embodied, he goes forth and just continues to preach the message and to indeed allow the church to grow in tremendous ways in, two, in magnificent different geographical regions of the world. And it really relates to what we hear in the gospel today. Um, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices, you will grieve, but your grief will become joy. And of course, our Lord is reminding us of this and giving us the example of a woman who's in labor, you know, as the pain increases, uh, she no longer remembers that pain once she gives birth to the child because that child has brought joy into the world and joy into her heart. And in that same way, Jesus reminds us that even in the times of trial and tribulation, the joy that he offers and the joy that he brings by our fidelity is incomparable to any pain or suffering we might, for a transitory time, suffer or experience. As we continue today and as we now celebrate the Eucharist. Let us ask the Lord to give us that same joy, give us that peace, and also give us that courage and zeal exemplified so magnificently today in our readings by St. Paul. Trusting the Lord knows our grief and anguish, we present now our needs to him this day. Let us pray that the Lord may heal the wounds of his church and bring justice and healing to her members. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the peace of Christ may overpower nations in conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may relieve the sufferings of all who struggle with disease or ill health, especially those who are hospitalized, homebound, or those affected by this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Christ may bring consolation to those in our community who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our personal intentions, for those needs listed in our parish book of prayer, and for all those we hold in the silence of our hearts and bring today now before the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Leo and Loretta Linsinger, for whom we offer Mass today, and also for Timothy Ball, who will be buried tomorrow, and for all the faithful departed, that they who have died may find eternal rest and peace in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wonder and might, we bring these prayers before you and ask you to hear them and answer them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accepting compassion, Lord, we pray the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ our Lord was handed over for our transgressions and was raised again for our justification. Alleluia. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us conclude today with our traditional Friday prayers for peace, those in the military, for vocations, and for those suffering from the pandemic. We begin with our prayer for peace. Praise to you, all loving God, for you speak tender words of peace to all your children. Guide our efforts to bring forth peace, the fruit of justice and love. Remove from us the greed and hate that threaten peace within our country and throughout the world. Inspire the leaders of governments to promote policies and actions that ensure peace and well-being for the human family. Strengthen those who work for peace in every place and keep safe under your watchful care all who serve and protect us. Bring lasting peace into our world by sending your eternal spirit into the hearts that you have made. Preserve all people from harm now and up to that day when the fullness of your peace will be revealed. 
Grant us this gift through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose kingdom of justice, love, and peace endures forever and ever. Amen. Our prayer for those serving in the military. Praise to you, ever watchful God, for you are our refuge and strength in every time and place. Send your blessing upon those who are serving our country in the armed forces. By your powerful spirit, shield them from all harm, uphold them in good times and bad, especially when danger threatens. Let your peace be the sentry that stands guard over their lives so that they may return home safely. Look with compassion on all victims of war, ease their sufferings and heal their wounds. Put an end to wars over all the earth and hasten the day when the human family will rejoice in lasting peace. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns as the Prince of Peace, both now and forever. Amen. And our prayer for religious vocations. Heavenly Father, your loving providence accompanies us on our life's journey. Thank you for the many gifts you have given us. We ask that you continue to call sons and daughters from our families and parishes to serve as priests, deacons, and consecrated men and women in the Diocese of Greensburg. Send your spirit upon us so that many will respond with great love to your call to service and leadership in your church. Give to those who have chosen the faith of the apostle, the vision of the prophet, and the courage of the martyr. Through the intercession of our diocesan patroness, Our Lady of the Assumption, help us to be faithful disciples of your Son by following the example of Mary. Make us generous in sharing ourselves and our talents for the sake of your kingdom on earth. We ask this through Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now we pray our prayer, the prayer of Archbishop Gomez, for our, those suffering and for our nation during this time of pandemic. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you are truly our compassionate mother, health of the sick, and cause of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, tomorrow on Saturday, uh, we are offering uh, confessions, public confessions here at the parish. Confessions will be available from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. in our Education Center, and you can certainly avail yourself uh, to the sacrament. Again, we have uh, sanitized the Education Center. We have it uh, set up so that one can receive the sacrament either anonymously or non-anonymously, and uh, a volunteer will be here to help uh, guide you into the education center, and there will only be one person in the center at a time, and that way we can ensure both proper social distancing and also confidentiality for your confession. So again, a reminder that we do have confessions tomorrow, Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., and also on Wednesday evenings until further notice from 6 p.m. to 7 the Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.